this is discrete maths, maths 1081. And in this section, we're going to have a look again at a selection of questions out of chapter four of this uh, course. So these are questions based around ideas connected with counting and combinatorial mathematics. I'm only going to do a, a selection of questions. I'm going to try and pick ones that probably your tutor won't cover in tutorials, including some slightly more difficult ones. So the first one is question 10, uh, which is a nice in interesting question to do with um, prime numbers and to do with an interesting function called Euler's phi function. So you can Google, you can Google this function, uh, Euler's phi function, if you want to get some more information on it. And it's a very important function in number theory. And what it does is it counts the number of positive integers less or equal to a given number n and relatively prime to n. So for example, if we looked at, um, if we looked at for example, 5, 12, so if you list the numbers up to 12 and pick out the ones that are relatively prime to 12, that is that have no common factor with 12 except 1, well then the numbers are 1, 5, 7 and 11 and so there's 4 of those. So 5, 12 is 4. And in this problem we're asked to compute various different values of 5 for uh, various situations. I'm going to do two that actually aren't in the question and then I'll do the ones that are in the question. So P, Q and R are distinct prime numbers. That means they're all different from each other. And I'll take alpha to be a positive integer. Well, firstly, 5 P is easy. If you've got a prime, for example, if you've wanted phi of, say, 7, then all the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are all relatively prime to 7 and less than it. So 5, 7 would be 6. So we can guess immediately that if P is a prime, then 5P is just P minus 1. Didn't ask you in the question to work out the next one, but it's an interesting one to do because I want to show you some patterns here as well. So 5P to the alpha now, I want to see, can we find a nice formula for 5P to the alpha? So we're looking to count the number of integers less or equal to P to the alpha that have no common factor with P to the alpha. Now, at first glance, that is quite a difficult idea. And often in mathematics, when you're trying to count something in one way, you, it's often easier to look at the opposite of it. And that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to say, well, look, I've got P to the alpha numbers up to P to the alpha. And I'm going to subtract off the number of positive integers, positive integers less or equal to P to the alpha and not relatively prime to p to the alpha. And that's much easier to calculate. So in particular, if I look at the number, if I start writing down the numbers, one, two, and so on, and I'm gonna stop when I reach p to the alpha, I want to see when is the first number I'm going to get to which is not relatively prime to p to the alpha, remembering that p is a prime. So the first number I'm going to get to, of course, will be p. Once I hit the number p, p and p to the alpha are not relatively prime. They've got a common factor of p. So that's the first one I'm going to hit. The second one, I keep going along here, I'll hit 2p. And again, that won't be relatively prime to p to the alpha. And I just see, looking at the pattern now, that means I'm going to go all the way up to p to the alpha. So the very last multiple of p that I'm going to hit at the end will be p to the alpha minus 1. And so that means that all of these numbers here all of these numbers here are not relatively prime to p to the alpha. And I can easily count those because there's one of them, two of them, up to p to the alpha minus one of them. So there are that many multiples of p. And so I can finish this off now, this little formula. So it's p to the alpha minus p to the alpha minus one. 
And so there's a nice little formula for 5p to the alpha using this idea. Now I'm going to use the same idea now to actually come back to the question. It asked us to calculate phi of p times q, where p and q are different distinct primes. And so I want to get a little formula for this one and see what the, what, how this comes out. And I'm going to use exactly the same idea, uh, only this time it's a little bit more complicated. I'll need to think about a kind of inclusion-exclusion idea. So I, I like to think of it like this. Again, I write down the numbers 1, 2, and let me suppose here that P is less than Q without any loss of generality. I'll take the two primes. I'll just choose P to be the smaller of the two. It doesn't matter, actually. So if I think about the multiples of P now, the first multiple that I'm going to get to, the first number I'm going to get to, which is not relatively prime to P times Q, will be P, because that was the smaller of the two primes. And so once I hit P, that will have a common factor with this number. And again, I'll get 2p, dot, 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 and I'll eventually get q lots of p. So using the same idea as I did here, this is going to be pq minus, I'm going to get q lots of, of p, so there'll be q numbers in this list that are not relatively prime to pq. On the other hand, I could have done the same with the uh, Q, so these are the numbers here, this one, this one, and this one. These are not relatively prime to PQ. Could have done the same for Q. So I could have said, well, I go through this list and I hit the number Q, and then I'll hit 2Q, and eventually I'm going to get P lots of Q. And so the number of numbers in this list that are not relatively prime to PQ are going to be these ones. And there are going to be P of those. And so again, going back to here, I'm going to subtract off P. And that's almost there, but you've got to be very careful, of course, with inclusion exclusion, because I've taken the total number and I've subtracted off the Q multiples of P and the P multiples of Q, but this number on the end, this one gets counted twice. This one got counted twice. I took it off once when I subtracted off that. I took it off again when I subtracted off that. So I've taken it off um, twice, and so I better add one back in again. And so there's the correct formula for phi of PQ. This when you look at the algebra of this, this invites one, I think, to play with the algebra a little bit, and I want to do a little bit of factorising of this. You can see I can take a Q out of these two terms, and I get a P minus 1, and I can take a minus 1 out of these two terms, and that means I can write this as P minus 1, take that out as a common factor times Q minus 1. And that's a much nicer way of writing the formula. Because notice then that this P minus 1 we saw back here, this was phi of P. So this is in fact phi of P, and this is in fact phi of Q. Now that's very nice because it tells me that phi of the product of these two distinct primes is just the product of the two phi values. That is a very nice fact. The third one we were asked to show or to find was phi of p squared times q. Well, I'm going to leave you to check the details of this one, but just to go to show you what you actually get, you do a similar sort of thing. You get p squared q. You're going to get p squared multiples of q, and which you'll have to subtract off. They will not be relatively prime to that. And I'm going to get minus um, pq multiples of p, have to worry a bit about that. And then you have to check carefully. It turns out that there are p multiples of the pq that I've subtracted off twice, and I have to add those back on. So I'll leave you to check the details of that. But again, interesting thing here is to factorize. This gives me p squared 
into Q minus 1, and I can take out a P into Q minus 1, and once again I can factor this nicely and get P squared minus P times Q minus 1. And again, going back to our little formula over here, if alpha is 2, this is just 5P squared times 5Q. And once again, because these are relatively prime to each other, you see how the phi values split. And that, in fact, always happens. I leave you then to guess what the, the, the very last one you were asked to do was 5PQR. And you can see what it's going to be. It's going to be P minus 1, Q minus 1, R minus 1. If these are three distinct primes, you'll get this similar sort of formula here. So this is 5P, 5Q and 5R. And again, you can check this is right by using this kind of inclusion-exclusion argument that I use there. Uh, just to finish then, if you um, wanted a general formula for this uh, phi of n, if you want a general formula for phi of n, which I'm not going to prove here, but you can see from what we've done how it's going to come out. If I write n as take its prime factorization, so you take your number n and you prime factorize it into its distinct prime factors, and that's the powers of them, then nice formula for phi, phi of n then, is just phi of p1 to the alpha 1 up to phi of pr to the alpha r. And then you can apply your formula to each of those. So you'll get p1 to the alpha 1 minus p1 to the alpha 1 minus 1 and so on, all the way up to pr to the alpha r minus pr to the alpha r minus 1. And so just generalising the ideas we had here, you can get a nice formula for these. So finally, so for example, if I wanted phi of 100, I prime factorise that as 2 squared times 5 squared, and then I just apply phi to each of these times 5 squared. This one we know is 2 squared minus 2. This one is 5 squared minus 5. And that gives me 40. So there are 40 numbers up to 100 that are relatively prime to 100. Well, I'll leave you to play with the ideas in here. They're very nice. It's a very nice little piece of mathematics. Mm -hmm.